All right, and welcome back to the Vancouver Life Real Estate Podcast and YouTube channel. Today, we are extra excited to be interviewing Mr. Jim Huang. He is the president of EXP Commercial USA, and he is here today in Vancouver hosting some events and here to talk to us as well about what's going on. Jim, thanks so much for being here today. Please, if you don't mind, right off the top, uh, give us a little bit of your background, what got you into commercial, and then what ultimately led you to EXP. Perfect. Well, Dan Ryan, thank you. Uh, it's a privilege to be here being in, well, I wish we would say sunny, but it rains a little in Vancouver, but happy to be here. It's a beautiful city. I love it every time I come here. And, and kind of the journey which I had in commercial real estate, I always say I, got, I fell into it. I, I, I just got lucky that I fell into something I really loved. I was studying to be actually be a doctor. Instead, I went into banking and wow. heavy finance. What yes. a switch. <laughs> <laughs> totally different, but analytical skills, right? Yeah. So instead, went into banking and finance in Wall Street, uh, loved to crunch numbers, doing a lot of analytical work. Went into then portfolio management, so I was very fortunate to work under a CEO of the largest tick syndicator back in the 90s. So really learned a lot by this large company, how to put and syndicate deals together and manage. So so really from a very high level, got to put it all together. And while I was at this private equity company, the largest tick uh, company in the country, I was analyzing from one particular company, hmm. Marcus and Milichap, which I can say, great company, you learn a lot because of the way they teach you and train you is very important. So I said, you know, to my boss, I would love to kind of take that experience. Love you all, all here. It's great to be a W-2, but I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to take my life into my own hand and whatever I create, I'd love to see, could I go sky's the limit, right? To really expand. So I made the tr uh, uh, change to Marcus and Millichap, cut my teeth over there for five years. For those that came from the bigger firms, they know surviving in those firms, oh, yeah. <laughs> which uh, uh, a very tough environment for five years was a big uh, a deal because it does take a lot out of you, especially the first year where you're learning the business, two, when you're producing. But there's a point where you had to leave. I built up enough relationship, created enough value that I said, you know what? Thank you for the opportunity to learn here, but now I'm gonna start on my venture of opening my first brokerage company. Very cool. And I would just say, when you open your first company, it's not usually very successful. <laughs> we heard it's like a volunteer kind of position. <laughs> it really is. And, and actually you're paying into it, yeah. like all working for free. Yeah. And, and sometimes you sit in, because I rented and subleased a 5,000 square foot office, and I said, I'm open. Wow. I thought I was a good broker. I mm -hmm. thought I had some good momentum and traction. I said, I'm just gonna set up shop and let's see what happens. Well, I was sitting in that office of 5,000 square feet by myself oh, for wow. one month. Oh my Jeez. goodness. That's, <laughs> that's an eye opener. <laughs> like I said, it's a volunteer position. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see what's kind of going through your head sitting there in the corner office, which we're all talking about. And I was like, did I make a mistake? Should I stay where, where it was safe? But really, after that period, just struggling, keep doing what you have to do every day, right? Eventually, second month, people joined, they heard about it, they came by and visited, they said, hey, this sounds great, and you kept building the momentum to a point, to our height, we had 180 commercial brokers. Holy cow. Yep, wow. doing two billion in sales. Wow. Kind of this boutique, full service company in Southern California. And really, we were all really proud of it because we built a culture of collaboration, teamwork, you know, sharing, helping, creating a family. Sounds familiar? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so by doing that, it was just fantastic. But sometimes when you grow to such success and you don't have the right platform, you almost break and collapse and, and it strains your own success of the growth. And that's some of the problems that we saw and also it was during the time of 2007, 2009. Ooh, yeah, tough so time. We, we kind of see something similar yeah. again mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. That in 2009, because I had brick and mortar, my nut was 450000 a month. Whoa. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. And not Jeez. making any money to cover it. No so kidding. you know what you have to do. And, and many people are going through this now. And, and, you know, God bless you. I feel for you. And hopefully still before it gets worse, you start pivoting, you start yeah, making right. these changes. You do what you need to, to be prepared where we may have 2023, 2024 to go through, right? Let's just yeah. be smart. Yeah. But by going through that, it was very tough. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I, I wish something would, someone would put me out of my misery. <laughs> <laughs> right? When you, when you think you had it all. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow when that happens because you go from 180 agents in a thriving business to scratching your head and wondering where all the money went. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and I would imagine, though, Jim, that your learning curve in those moments changed dramatically as well. You know what? I, going through it, you're happy you went through it. During the time you hated it, you wish it would have never happened. Yeah. So you wish it never happens to anyone else. But it was so tough. And I think that's where EXP started when Glenn Sanford started the Agent Central. Hey, do we need all this brick and mortar? I was thinking the, my, the same thing myself. And what do I do with all this space? So I was subleasing it to other service providers, CPAs, lawyers, marketing people. It sounds like it became more of an issue than it was a benefit. Yes. I mean, when we consider the market conditions and yes, when things are good, sure, maybe it makes sense. But times aren't always good in marketplaces. And in fact, you often thrive when they shift. <laughs> well, you know, and this is the smart ones, right? And unfortunately, hopefully people are listening that there's opportunities when the market turns. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people are so fearful, so scared, so siloed, so much in despair. They're not seeing mm -hmm everything around them with the opportunities. It's kind yeah. of a, a, a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. You've got somebody who, who continues to think to themselves, well, I know everything about what I should be doing, so why am I not thriving? Whereas people in a growth mindset, they go, listen, a setback is part of what I'm trying to achieve here in the longer run. I've got to pivot a little bit here and keep going. Exactly. And I think that that, you know, if, if you're stuck in that fixed mindset, the next couple of years are going to be pretty tough. Well, or you're not even going to be in the business again. That too. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we've seen that. that, and, and this is why we go network. We upgrade our skills. And I'll just say during COVID, I got my insurance license. I was just studying. I wrote articles in Forbes. I wow. wrote a book. You know, <laughs> you use that time yeah. when yeah. it's yeah. downtime yeah. to, to develop improve yourself. your skills. Yeah, yes. develop yourself. Yeah. Like we were just talking about, right? Instead of just saying, okay, well, the world's shutting down. Let's just, you know, sit on the couch, drink wine for three months. <laughs> Like, we I did think, for one. Yeah. But... <laughs> it was more like, like yeah. let's utilize this time to do something productive. And, yes. and like Brian was touching on, that's literally where we decided to pivot, create the podcast, create the YouTube channel yes. and maximize that time. And again, I think it also comes from experience, right? So if you've been through a few downturns, you know that, okay, based on the last one, I saw all the opportunities, all the people who got incredibly wealthy on the backside of a recession. Yeah. Now I know what to look for. Especially, now I know how to prepare myself today. Especially 08. There you go. You know, I mean, it, it, it went down hard for six, eight months there. And as things came out of that, there was a lot of money that was made coming out of that side. A lot of money. And I think we're in a very similar position right now, right? The only difference is, is at least here, we don't have the inventory we had in 2008, which is going to make it even more difficult for yes. people that are coming out on the other side. If you're not prepared, it's going to be much harder. Well, and, and that's what I kind of added, you know, for the residential agents or others kind of siloed into one product type is to expand your knowledge into commercial totally learning you know what we're doing at exp commercial the transactions the leasing the business op but also scaling on the services the capital markets the asset facility management the valuation other corporate services so when you speak to your clients you could say yes right and then connect right because mm -hmm. you have this connection to the right people of experts i think what's really cool when we were down in uh, vegas at the exp con and we, we were hearing you speak you spoke a lot about collaboration and collaboration as we all know is a big part of exp's culture yes um, and honestly speaking i'm so proud of that because we are natural collaborators we love to do that anyhow it was a big part of our business and to step into a model where that was at the forefront was very exciting but when you were speaking, what, what we found very interesting was the amount of referrals that came from, call it 87,000 agents across the company mm -hmm. into the commercial space. Um, we were speaking actually at dinner a couple nights ago, and uh, the number one commercial agent um, that came to eXp was telling us that last year, $9.2 billion in ends was referred from residential realtors to commercial realtors in eXp. That is a massive number and speaks to the level of collaboration that exists in the company, which I think is so different than the way it currently works out in the marketplace. A yeah. Absolutely, and being corporate, not franchise helps mm -hmm. because everyone has this flag. 
okay, you all fly the same flight, but you're not collaborating, coordinating, That's working right. together. If anything, you know, it's, it's sad that sometimes here people are against their own because of their territories or whatever limitations they put on themselves. But to truly, you know, as Glenn Sanford put together, agent centric, mm -hmm. I love that term, mm -hmm. right? The agents are benefit. If you flip the pyramid upside down to make sure everyone else benefits and leadership here is to serve very flat and open that anyone could talk whenever yeah. you need to, to, to reach some people. It is just a very powerful model. That's what's really cool. I mean, we were able to literally reach out after going to the conference and be like, hey, Jim, you know, we'd love to have you on our podcast and let's talk about what's happening with EXP commercial. And you were just like, when and where? I'm yes. going to be in Vancouver this time. And we were like, oh, <laughs> okay. But again, that's the culture where it, it, it's this culture of, of lifting each other up where we get to stand on the shoulders of giants. Yes. And that's really cool. When I would even flip it back, we get to stand on all your success <laughs> to even stand higher and lifting more people up. So yeah. that's... You know, really, people have to really come by to our events to feel mm -hmm. the culture. You can yeah. kind of hear about it, mm -hmm. maybe see it, some on the YouTube videos. Yeah. But to, when you come and you visit and you experience, you really immerse yourself. You feel, wow, this feels pretty good. It's a right? movement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For lack of a better term. <laughs> <laughs> so EXP Residential is obviously the brokerage that Ryan and I are with, right? Yes. We've been with them for a year and a half and we have an intimate understanding of why it is the fastest growing brokerage in history. It's unbelievable for us, our business and how that relates to our clients and collaboration. So let's elaborate a little bit more here on the commercial side because yes. it's relatively new for EXP and a bit of vision of where that's growing. Mm -hmm. So in the commercial, you know, as I was going through and I ran franchise operations and many other parts of the commercial industry, parts and pieces, you know, I realized it is important to create a company really from scratch because you have to build it on technology. Yeah. But we had some really big winning pieces, a very large, fastest growing realty company. We are metaverse. We are virtual, mm -hmm. which saves on cost. We are corporate, not franchised. We are publicly traded, mm -hmm. not private. Mm -hmm. Those ingredients already, I said, you know what? This is a winning hand. I can work with this hand to play it even better. Mm -hmm. And so building that model on technology with the success of Realty, adding the commercial, and really even if it has a residential name, we started building momentum, mm -hmm. right? By getting the right leaders, the right people involved, right? It's always about people it's, in our business, regardless of tech. That's mm -hmm. all it is. It's all people. Yes. Right. So by getting the right people to start building, right? And building, it resonated with people saying, wow, you know what? It's a good split. 80-20 capping at 20,000. Not too bad. Commercial, you don't cap. It's unlimited. Regardless of what it is, you keep paying. We also, for $250, and this is in the U.S., for the tech suite, we hope to launch and share what we're going to do here in Canada. But the tech suite, you need a fully integrated technology suite yeah. where everything can plug in. And like you were saying, monetize and connect our residential commercial even in an easier way so everyone can connect and close more deals. It would be ideal, yeah. I mean, I we, we've done a number of commercial deals this year um, and, and we had to go and find help to get them done, right? Knowing that that's now coming through EXP, believe you me, they're going to stay inside the company. That's right. <laughs> right? And that's what we need to do is connect the technology. So one great split, you know, people say we don't want to go lateral. Well, you're not, you're getting, mm -hmm. uh, you're getting an increase in pay. A big okay? increase. In pay. Big increase in pay. <laughs> that's when you can buy your building instead of just renting the corner office. Yeah. <laughs> that is your office. Yeah. You own it. Yeah. Right. Because you're paying that much anyway from the commission splits that you were just giving away. Mm -hmm. But then putting the complete technology suite. And this is something different from residential because we have so many different product types from transactions to leasing to business opportunity. And even in those categories, it breaks up into multifamily, retail, office, industrial, triple net, land deals, right? Yeah. So much nuances in commercial real estate. But with the success, building the right technology, and it takes time and it's constantly improving, mm -hmm. we build it, build it so we can connect, right? As we are one global company. And I always tell Michael Valdez and Megan Kelly, you guys are growing so fast. I, I 22, 23, 24, yeah, countries, right? The town yeah. keeps coming yeah. Yeah. like Canada. Well, and, and you got to look at the, when we were at the shareholder conference, you know, they want to be in 50 countries 
in five years. Yes. 500,000 agents is the goal. Yes. That is a no joke growth mm-hmm. <laughs> a plan, right? Yes. So I, I, and I think it's important for a lot of people who are listening and who may be considering a commercial move, what it means to move over now as opposed to moving in five years. And I'll say that because it took EXP roughly 13 years to get to 85,000 agents. In the next year and a half, it's probably going to double. So the acceleration in your opportunity is now. I, I believe it is now during this time to learn from a company that you can have a, a bigger impact, right? Whether you're a senior commercial agent or a new one, you can get a lot out of it by being involved. So you say, you can be proud of saying, I created, I built this. Mm-hmm. And like I said at EXP shareholders, and even at EXPCon, if you knew what you knew in realty, when it was 6,000 to grow to let's say 86, 87, keeps growing. Yeah. Knowing that commercial is 700, knowing that it can be two, 3,000 of the best commercial agents in the company, what do you wanna do? So the yeah. time is now, it's not, let's wait until there is yeah. two, three, four, five thousand. 5,000. Yes, you're gonna benefit, but you will have, I would say, less of an impact, less of that yeah. camaraderie and friendship like having you started. And we all laugh yeah. about, we started what? They talked to you three, four years ago? That's right. With yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took some time for us to make that move, right? Um, and now, obviously, wishing we maybe had gone earlier. But... <laughs> well, and so many people think they need proof of concept. Yeah. Before they're like, I believe in it now, here we can go. So here we are, 13 years in, public company, public for what, four or five now. Uh, we've got a debt-free company. Yes. They've got something like 400 million in the bank cash. Like this is about as solvent as you can go out and ask for. Yeah. You know what I mean? So proof of concept is in place. Yes. And of course, now they've shifted that to... Uh, emulate into the commercial space, which I think is so exciting. And that's the thing. You already know what Realty has laid the track, right? Standing on the giant and, mm-hmm. and success of, of yeah. the residential company. Why do you think it's not going to be any different? And if it was, if it was, we wouldn't have grown so quick year one. Yeah. We were building the rocket ship as it was flying. You it may- wouldn't have happened. Maybe let's talk about that year one because... When we were down at the shareholder conference, mm-hmm. there was a list that went up and it was it was a commercial realty list, right? And we're looking at it and we're like, holy cow, EXP's been in commercial for a year and they're ranked 11th in the country? Yes. Yeah, the the, the companies that are above are 100-year-old companies yes. that have been around for ages. And here comes the disruptor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I yeah. see it. Mm-hmm. That's literally how I see it. And, and that's absolutely correct. You know, by agent count is where we're tracking, but now we're tracking on gross production and so many other metrics of commercial real estate. And many of the leaders from the other companies are making this decision, as we were saying, over COVID, they didn't need the office. Mm-hmm. They wanted a discount. They wanted to set up their own office. They wanted to even buy their own office yeah. to get the tax write-offs. Yeah. You know, so there was so much change with the way we're doing business, being agent-centric and all the benefits, the, the lead generation that comes from the residential commercial, but connecting everyone through technology. The commercial agents are passing so many deals. And, and one of the biggest things is, the commercial agents at these other companies, not like they don't want to collaborate, they mm-hmm. can't. Yeah. Because when you're under 50-50 and the house takes so much, there's less collaboration because 100%. there's less to split. Yeah, we all want that yeah, 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 these totally. kind of companies. Totally. Yeah. yeah, I think that almost needs to be expanded on because it's it's we say it because we understand it. But let's keep in mind, the average split for a commercial agent is 50-50, yes. right? You're giving 50% of all your earned commission to the brokerage. At EXP Commercial, it's an 80-20 or possibly a 75-25 split in Canada. Up to 20 grand. And once you pay 20 grand to the brokerage, you retain 100% of your income for the rest of that calendar year. Yes. It's a massive difference. I mean, that alone, like you said, allows you to buy the office as opposed to renting it. Yes. Many, many agents, especially here in Vancouver with the, the size of those, uh, of you know, we just did a warehouse for 7 million. You'd cap on your first deal. Absolutely. And then you're done. And then away you go. And to me, that's like, okay, it's motivating. To run the rest of the year knowing you're going to earn your keep. I, I think it's just so empowering and freedom, right? You know good commercial brokers when yeah. they see the model. And we, I always love the term, you can't unsee it. Yeah. You cap within your first, I would say first or second deal, yeah. right? Absolutely. Because 80-20 uh, capping at 20, very easy for commercial agents. Yeah. Now you're like, well, 
you know, your clients are getting you a referral deal, this deal, that, you can collaborate and still make more than some of the firms that you are at because, yep. you know, they're, the house is taking 50 feet. You're like, oh, I can split with you and I'm still making more than where I was at before. But staying in your lane, mm -hmm. really building your business, having other people leveraging, right? Yeah. Leveraging your knowledge and your connections so other good, you know, top-notch brokers of that expertise can work on your deals. And there's just so much to pass around and yeah. because of this expertise we can so support yeah. the residential because many of us you know we're top brokers or even institutional brokers as yeah. you, you know yeah. the phone call that's I was right talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. he's an institutional guy but here one we got proof of concept as we were yeah. talking about to grow that fast with age account yeah. was unheard of yeah. and many of these technology service providers didn't believe us but now we're their biggest vendors year two we're starting to, to dip our toes into a little international expansion and commercial, but also setting the services and constantly improving the tools. So it is that kind of evolution year one, like wow, you saw that, yeah. you know, ranked just one year while everyone's hundreds of years, yeah. right? They were around a hundred years or yeah. more. And now we're building the tools. So what do you think we're going to start doing in year two, year three, you know, follow the path of what the success is. And yeah. I always tell people watch and, and follow <laughs> EXP commercial on LinkedIn, because yeah. that's where you're going to see all the great things that we, we are doing. So you can at least monitor us, even if your competitors yeah. see what we're working on. <laughs> nice. I think um, obviously the residential side has attracted some absolute massive teams heavy hitters, even full brokerages. I can only imagine some of the groups that have come over already on the commercial side. Is there a couple names you don't mind dropping here that uh, people might recognize as far as whales that have joined EXP Commercial? Yeah, so one good one uh, that has been in the industry for a long time was uh, Mark Allen. Uh, you know, he came from a very large national, international firm, he brought his whole group of 25 agents. Wow. And they were, you know, I think they were paying to the house almost four million plus. <laughs> Right, oh. that they could now invest in their own business and company. And we have many wow. institutional players. Some of our top did, you know, easily 1 million plus gross on their first deal. And that's they, life changing. It's, it's life changing. It's, it's tremendous and more referrals. And now they're telling their cousin, their brothers that own other shops, the water's warm. This is working, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know? And they're looking at now looking at it even more seriously with all the change in the market that this model does work for commercial real estate. So Jim, if, if, if I'm a new commercial broker, um, how, is there a mentorship program? Is there a way of learning? Because, you know, EXP for, for new residential agents as well has a great training suite, right? And again, you get that sponsorship as well. So you've got your, your upline to help you with that. Um, but how does the mentorship program work? You or know, is there one? Uh, there is, and we're mm -hmm. fond, we're constantly improving on it, right? There's nothing set, and there's always new ways and new things coming out. But one of the things that we're doing now is doing a corresponding course. So if you're global, if you're in residential, you want to dip your toes to learn, we're putting a corresponding course together so you can watch it at your own pace. Oh, cool. We are monitoring, so <laughs> we put some technology in where we know you're watching the videos, you're doing the homework, yeah. you're answering the question, so we can see if you're actually participating. This That's is cool. also to help our realty agents learn the lingo, learn mm -hmm. different pieces of the commercial real estate business. So it's our prerequisite, so if you're ready to come, then you can come to the other part. But we hope to teach the corresponding, which is going to teach you the book knowledge. Yeah. We also want to teach people the technology. And as we all know, it's about people, mm -hmm. the soft skills, how to open through whether it's door knocking, cold calling, you know, cold introductions yeah. of how you can engage to kind of move through the pathway of getting an exclusive to getting paid. And then we go and say rinse and repeat. But yeah. we're also open to the new ways of branding. And this is the most power thing, powerful thing, I think, with EXP. You can brand you. You can brand yeah. yourself yeah. in this way of social media and digital. You need to brand yourself because before we were branding these other companies and building them totally. when it was us. Yeah. yeah. The personal brand very much alive in the in the residential side of things and has been a big part of our success from differentiating us from everyone else, yes. right? And I think the same exists in, in commercial. It has to. The vast majority, when, I mean, when Dan and I have moved to uh, through an, a couple of different brokerages before ending up at EXP, and I think it's important, a lot of agents sometimes have that misconception that your clients are gonna stay with the brokerage and that couldn't be further from the truth. The clients are with you. Yes. And they follow you. They don't 
necessarily care where you hang your license. They want to be with you, unless you're at the institutional level, which might be a little different. Well, and that's the great thing you brought that up. When I was at a very large firm at Marcus, they didn't care. They actually thought I was at Century 21. But it was, <laughs> I'm like, no, but <laughs> you know, you we work with you, right? Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. right. But when you talk about institutions, mm -hmm. this is where our advantage comes in. We're publicly traded. Yeah. We're corporate, not franchise. Mm -hmm. We're organizing our leadership and our deck of within that product type to be service right. And we are winning institutional accounts because if you're independently franchised, not publicly traded, not corporate, yeah. they can't work with you. Yeah. No, to be honest, no yeah. deep pockets. Yeah. So because we're structuring and working as a large company, there's a lot of check the box. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of time where we really start competing and winning even more so mm -hmm. at our price where we can be more flexible and cooperate because the people, the agents are coming over with us and we're publicly traded. Yeah. We're corporate. Right. We have all the expertise. Most of them are all coming over. Divisions of those different practices are coming over. So wow. you worked with them at the other firm, but now you can check a box, publicly traded, corporate. Okay. Yeah. That's the good thing with very different than many other firms because we have that competitive advantage in commercial. That and I, yeah. I guarantee you as well, further to the education question, that because the agents benefit from the other agents around them being successful, that they're going to share their knowledge in the exact same way that we see it in residential. Yeah. I want you to be a success and I'm gonna help you become one because I financially benefit. There's a There's, financial alignment. That's exactly it. Right, and that's, that's, a, that's a huge piece. Yes. That's a huge, huge piece. And I, I didn't know how big that was until you're in it. Exactly. It, Oh, and, and talking about the training with the correspondent prerequisites, going to a full, let's say, quarter, making sure you're accountable if you want to move to full commercial. And then when we have the different product types, specialists, like you were saying, maybe you want to be multifamily, retail, office, industrial, mm -hmm. you know, small retail from 10 million below to 10 million above, sometimes over $100 million, wow. right? Different skill sets. Yeah. All time. different skill sets. So we have the seniors and mentors and people that can help you and adding coaching into this that the new agents can go through the course of getting the corresponding, learning the knowledge, going to a real mentorship program, working mm -hmm. with a good senior broker that can help you start getting your, your deals, your, your toes wet uh, through the first year, which is always the hardest year where we always yeah. say to some people, expect you'll make no money. Seriously, yeah. in commercial real estate, we expect... Does your wife work? Or do you live at home? Because right. you well, may not make money for a year. In any other business, in any other business, I mean, you opened your own franchise. Yes. You, you didn't make money in that first year, right? Mm -hmm. you, there's a there's an ROI to some of these changes, and some people have to realize that if you're going to move a brokerage or something to that effect, you you are going to have to pay uh, an investment price up front to benefit from that long term. Yes. It's it's part of doing that. Part of doing business at the end of the day. But I'll add another competitive because we have so much referrals. Yeah. You can our make senior all brokers <laughs> are getting deals they yeah. don't want to work on. They give it to their new agent brokers to cut your teeth on this. Well, that's so you can make some money in your pocket. Keith, yeah. who we were talking to at dinner, um, yes. I can't remember his last name. Um, he was the, the first guy to move over after you. Yes. Um, and he mentioned to me, he, he said, he gets roughly six referrals a week from residential agents. And he has, I believe he told me, six or seven mentees right now. Yes. And he literally throws them the deal, they, they decide on a split, and then from there he coaches them through the deal. That's it. I, I'm sorry, but if you can learn in that, <laughs> in that capacity where somebody yeah. is willing to hand over a referral and say, hey, listen, I'll just guide you, you figure it out, that's a path to, to start him. It is such a secret sauce that yeah. people that want to get into the business and Keith and others have uh, you know, perfected, right? Because he does network. He does use workplace. He's out there. You got to be out there, right? Yeah. You can't sit in a closet yeah. and expect you to just make yeah. money over You got to work a business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just this caveat, I say, you're lazy. You probably yeah. get a job to get paid. <laughs> we are, we are, yes, we are. Uh, there's a lot of proactive uh, activity taking place to get that. Yes. But that being said, it's there if you want it. 100%. And that's the fun thing for the tools, the platform, everything is there for you. Mm -hmm. You just have to go out and reach to grab it. Yes, right. right. Get the education, participate in workplace, show up at events. The more you do this and people say, well, gee whiz, you're an overnight success or you're so lucky, but they don't understand what it takes to be lucky, right? Yeah. You have to do all the work, hard work, setting the platform, which, you know, what we've all done. And then you just plug in. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. Plugging it in and connect. Okay, so EXP commercials clearly been a huge success in like out of the gate year one yes. in the states. We're sitting here in Canada. You're here in Canada. Can we talk about EXP commercial coming to Canada? And I mean, my goodness, obviously. For the early adopters, this must be a huge, huge opportunity. Well, you know, it's really uh, crazy, but the, I think the cat is almost out of the bag where everyone's <laughs> reaching out from all around. People are flying from the other side with Toronto, Quebec, you know, Calgary. They're just like, okay, we got to meet, we got to talk. <laughs> yeah. But but it is these baby steps of making sure, you know, we have a stable foundation, making sure we have all the tech suites, the leadership right in place, but getting people kind of plugged in, right? That are in realty or want to come over at first, plugging in with the tools, connecting with all the leadership product type specialists and everyone else, building a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. And we all know from there, it's just gonna grow. But many people are saying, we don't mind being in realty first, doing commercial, as long as we can plug in with the right tools, with yeah. the right people, and then slowly getting everything licensed and built right. But it's coming mm -hmm. very quick. I mean, I am super excited with the excitement in Canada for growing this. Actually, it was even, bigger maybe hopefully some good things came from the u.s from it yeah. but here in canada we, it is really going gangbusters and meetings are set up non-stop yeah i mean i can only imagine we've already, we've already had our own <laughs> and we're residential guys right so that's where it's getting it's getting exciting because a lot of people are you know having done a number of commercial deals and, and worked with commercial agents don't think i haven't sort of expressed what life's like over here and once that kind of permeates what's going on, they, they, they start to ask a little bit more questions. They maybe take you around the back of the building and say, hey, look, appreciate the building talk and everything, but tell me a little bit more about what's happening with EXP. Because, uh, because you get to own a piece of the, the action. You're, you're an equity stakeholder. You get shares. You can build passive income. You can own <laughs> the money you earn. Yes. Which is... I know I, I, you know, for those young guys out there who are wanting that corner office, who, who, who think that that's what the life is about, I can tell you it's about your bottom line. It's your freedom. That is your freedom. <laughs> and I'll even go back. <clears throat> I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> I built a 180 person commercial brokerage business. It was very successful. Everyone knew in Los Angeles and Southern California, but when things didn't go right and things don't and you start seeing, oh my gosh, no money, but all this liability, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's office, employees, technology, you have costs, you have expenses, you have liability. You wish you would have never done it, but here I always say at EXP, and ego, to be honest, and we'll go yeah. through that, yeah. where you think you're in the corner office, you think this, you own the company, but there's liability to it. Mm. Here at EXP, which I love when we're talking about having it powered by, brokered by, right? Yeah, Just yeah. putting that part. You actually have a company without having all the liability, the overhead, negotiating. You can go to bed at night. <laughs> I love going to bed at night, it's sleeping well. You, you, you know, and that's the great thing that the platform's there so you can build your brand, you can yeah. build your team, and yeah. things are building, and we are listening to what everyone needs and working on it and constantly improving and fixing it. Then for the individual that, Right, why you did this with freedom, being a producer, doing what you like. They're finding out during times, they're renegotiating. They're doing disputes with brokers. They're doing all the things that they didn't want to do, but thinking it's so sexy. And right now, a lot of people wish they never opened their franchise. They never signed the lease yeah. because yeah. now when there's no production, no money, no opportunity, they're just like, oh my gosh, there's just debt. There's just liability. There's just what we have to pay out. And that's why this model makes so much sense. It's on a publicly traded that has a bunch of cash, position well, being virtual, uh, and also the, the culture, right? You need the culture of everyone wanting to collaborate and help each other. So how long did you own your own brokerage for? Because I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in that story. I think a lot of people that we speak to, when they're with a particular company, it becomes a part of their identity, yes. right? And that's, that's a tough shift for some people to make is understanding that, well, I've been a CBRE agent for the last 10 years. This is kind of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how did you, who owned your own brokerage, who had, who had that attachment, that identity, how did you go from that to, to seeing the light with EXP? Yeah. And, you know, did you, did you leave it at a bad time or did you leave it at a good time? How, tell us a little bit about that shift. Well... During the time you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Two, it happens to you. And 
like what happened with Glenn and everyone else and how EXP was created. I just saw the liability. But also, this is the one problem. There, I had dry powder to should have bought single family homes. Instead, I kept my brokerage. Mm. I didn't keep my brokerage alive. I kept my ego alive mm. because it was such a big company, well known, still well known. And my partners run it under the name, but he still runs it. And the ego for me to save, you know, using the whatever I had instead of buying assets is what kills people. And we all say ego kills is it's about me. It's about this brand. It's about something that you can't let go of. Yeah. And when you do that, you, you find out you're almost misled and, and, and drawn in the other. You should really think about, you know, the happiness, right? Taking care of my family. Don't worry about this because it's better to have that security of yeah. rev share, stock ownership, you know, not having liabilities. Yeah. And, and here, I would say EXP allows you to brand yourself, but taking those liabilities, those costs, those, those things that you have to deal with and pay when the market turns mm. is just you sleep well yeah. at night. And, and my first big mistake, which a lot of brokers, large egos, especially commercial, they want to make it about them. They want to make it about their brand. But when things go bad, and they do, it's a cycle. Yep. You wish you would have never done it. Now you're spending your job managing, dealing with people when you, you could have kept it small, building yeah. and doing what you really enjoy, building wealth, building relationships, right? Doing fun things. Yeah. But instead, you were just building this your ego. This ego. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I looked at Chuck Fazio for a similar story there, right? He built a residential brokerage of 900 agents over a 15-year time span. And you can imagine the ego that could be in place, the bravado of yeah. building such a massive successful company. And then he saw EXP's model and said, I'm going over there. Yes. And two and a half, three years later, not only has he gone from that 900 to 8,000 people in his organization, <laughs> yes. like you said, dropped the liability, dropped the overhead and has over 10 x his income. Yes. He, he thought he was at the absolute peak and now he has blown through that 10 times. Yeah, like, his, re his residential brokerage was doing 2 billion. Yes. yes. Right? Like this is no joke. This mm. isn't a small brokerage. This mm. isn't a small move. Right? Yeah. And he also identified, he said in that switch, he was likely going to lose a million dollars in his first year. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that actually panned out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I doubt it did because of the growth that took place with EXP. But... But understanding that there is going to take, there's a, a small cost to making these business changes if you want what's on the other side. And that's the good point where you look at different people you want to mimic within the company yeah. mm -hmm. and track that success. Yeah. If you say somebody's here that's not working, well, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I've actually experienced and seen it and naysayers that, okay, Jim, I'll be with you. Let's see it. I'll give you a year. And then all of a sudden they actually plug themselves in. They yeah. did what they needed to do. Yeah. And they go, it works. And then this is the funny thing. You saw it at dinner. They were like, why did it work? I saw money just rolling into my account yeah. by just yeah. doing my job. And these are good producers. Mm -hmm. But they just got hooked by just sharing our model, right? Changing people's yeah. lives. And when they just check, they're just doing their job, right? right? We always call it mailbox money. They just <laughs> yeah. start pouring in. He's like, what is this? That's my rent And it keeps growing yeah. by doing the job. Well, and it's a job you'd be doing anyways. You know, exactly. and I, I look at like our old brokerages and, and, you know, before we really knew about EXP, we were doing that for them anyways, just because it's part of what we were doing. We wanted to work with good people. We yes. wanted to collaborate by our, our own very nature. But now we get rewarded for that. Now we're getting incentivized for that. And you get a piece of equity for that work you're putting in. And I'm sorry, but that is better than any award I could be given for production, better than any, you know, round of applause and, you know, come up and grab your, your medal. You did great. You're your top producer. I don't care about that. What, what, what's really cool is the job that we continue to do every day. We continue to build our own equity, our own freedom with it. And that's, that is a massive shift in perspective. You know, as much as you may love your broker, the brokerage company, you should look at your family, right? And, and what security, because if things go bad and hard, and we heard so much with RevShare or selling the stock or just building, you know, and, and getting the benefits of our healthcare, especially in the US, if without this, you would be in trouble. And yeah. as much as you may love the brand, the broker, the some people, they're not going to take care of you during the hard times. You almost have to look after yourself. So you really need to look at the model. I, I would always tell people it's okay, but at least look at it to say no, do it informed and, and watch other people. Maybe don't hear the negativity because there are those in every company. Yeah. 
and look at those you want to mimic and those you admire because we all have friends in all different companies that we do admire but just look at it of do you want this or do you want that and do you want to be financially free and running a brokerage being a broker building building my own brokerage running a franchise operation i mean literally i've done it seen it yeah, all yeah at every aspect and i said this is the best brand I, yeah. I would have to say because it helps you build yourself build your team build your security and helping others collaborate i mean i've never seen this that once you really plug in you got to give it a chance you right do. but you got to yeah. plug in yeah. that once you get it it's almost addictive where you can't <laughs> oh, yeah. help sharing and showing and maybe that's why they think we're kind of crazy yeah. Every kids, we, we keep talking about it yeah. and i gotta say like you know the, the even just the share by practice that we have in the residential side where we get to buy up to five percent of our commission check for ten percent less than the market value of the stock yes We've been doing that now for 15, 17 months, and the market slowed down. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're wondering, um, well, I, you know, we were doing anywhere between, between 5 and 15 deals a month, mm -hmm. right? It was a decent level of production. And when that drops off to you know, 3 to 5 deals a month max, mm -hmm. you start looking at other avenues for revenue. And when you open up your share package and you realize you've been buying shares for the last year and a half, all of a sudden, you've got a safety net that'll get you through a time like this so you can pivot your business. That's powerful. And I don't know other companies that are doing that short of actually having to buy it on the stock exchange. Right, right. but not at a discount. That's right, right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it is building the base because you are part of the company, you feel it, you see the culture, you can talk to all leadership. And yeah. I would say, not everyone can you talk to like a Glenn Sanford or right. Michael Valdez or Jeff White's or any of the leaders, right? They're all there to serve, to help, to be part of this because everyone's here together. And when you build that kind of community and alignment, right? Yeah. You need that alignment. Yeah. It feels good. It and does. we are all there together. No matter what we do, right? It's always the best when the owners are in the office. Exactly. They're the ones turning off the light. They're <laughs> the ones throwing out the trash because they're yeah. like, this is mine. Yeah. Right? And it is important to be aligned with everyone feeling this is mine. I'll share my story too when it comes to the rev share aspect of it because historically I've been buying um, rental properties for about 10 years and collectively the passive income I earned from that was trumped in my first year with EXP <laughs> with the rev share yeah. and, I'm, and that took no capital outlay yes. yeah. right this is kind of quote unquote free this is why it's so passive too or and risk so to see yeah there you go or risk yeah or to have the tenants or the floods or whatever you know <laughs> so to see it happen that quickly was a bit of a mind F. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. What do I do? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, uh, there's, I mean, there's, there's endless stories about how it's truly changed people's lives and, and we're happy to share ours too. So well, yeah. Jim, if we're talking about uh, just to shift gears a little bit here and talk maybe about EXP commercial in the future. Yes. Where, um, I know you've got a tremendous amount of ambition. You've got an incredible plan moving forward. It's really cool. Just practicing the law of proximity to be yes. around and listening to the conversations you're having and realizing that there is a real mover and shaker in the business here. So where do you see EXP Commercial, not just EXP Commercial Canada, but EXP Commercial in the next, say, three to five years? Well, you know, we always have to shoot higher than wherever we're at. So I'm always shooting the top five companies mm -hmm. globally. Because, okay. you know, making these kind of moves... And we know we can do it because the tech is out there. Yeah. Most of these big firms are using third-party tech anyway, white yeah. labeling. Yeah. So it's not their tech. Right. And most of the power are through their brokers because of the relationship. So it's just these brands. Mm. They're just old school brands. Some people like it. Some people can move away. But when you have the right people, yeah. you have the right tech because they're all third-party. Yeah. What do you have? Now, because we have that publicly trade, we have all those pieces. We are hopefully, you know, shooting to as high as we can go. Yeah. I would love to be number one one day, five, maybe 10 years down the line. I know it's realistic. Yeah. You know, we can do this because look what happened, let's say with Amazon, yeah. with Uber and other companies. They've taken over entire industries using technology. Mm -hmm. So why can't we? Very interesting point because one of my favorite case studies is Toys R Us mm -hmm. and Amazon. And Amazon came to Toys R Us and said, hey, we want to take you guys online and be the biggest toy broker in the world. And Toys R Us said, you don't understand how people want to buy toys. People want to come in, they want to feel the toys, and they want to buy them for their children right there. And Amazon went, you clearly don't understand parents or convenience and the way this world is moving. And we are innovating and you're not. 
And now Amazon is the biggest provider of toys because when my kid likes a toy or they see something or they're playing with it, I can get it tomorrow without yes. having to go to the store. I'm sorry, as a parent, that convenience factor was bridged with tech. Yes. And that was the great equalizer. And I think in commercial, you have to be open-minded. Learning from residential. Yes, we don't put our faces on cards, right? I heard this all the time with commercial agents. <laughs> but the other part is technology, embracing technology. Commercials like, we don't do that. Well, we're doing that now, right? And more and more, we're doing that. And I think with all these changes, especially during COVID and now what's going on again with the inflation and interest rates, it is so important. Technology, efficiencies, collaboration, but using it and putting it in the right way, still it's people, but how do we use this, right? And there is this symbiotic way of using, you know, technology, good people. Yeah. And then these old brand names, they're great people there. I mean, it's always great people that, that makes the brand. More and more of the people start coming over to us. And that's the goal is setting up the best technology, setting up the best system, getting the best people, right? Creating the best culture. And I mm -hmm. love the agent centric because you're aligned. Yeah. When you keep doing it, eventually, right? We all hear the tipping point. One day it just happens. Yeah, right. You're not yeah. talking. They just start pounding on your door, yeah. wishing to come <laughs> in. And that's what's going to happen in commercial. I feel it. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and never rest on your laurels, right? We all say, Always be comfortable being uncomfortable. Totally. Absolutely. Because the minute you get too comfortable, somebody else <laughs> eats your <laughs> lunch. <laughs> That's right. yeah, yeah. It's happened time and time again. Yeah. I don't know why people don't realize yeah. there's always innovators. There's always other people. There's That's other right. new outside you don't even see. Yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. keep yourself uncomfortable. Keep yourself learning. Keep yourself humble and grounded. Uh, that's a real growth mindset right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we could, for fun, play devil's advocate because it all sounds very, very good. Is there any commercial brokers, agents that wouldn't fit this model? Is there anybody who wouldn't look at EXP and be like, that could work for me? I got those people <laughs> and I talked to them, good friends. Yeah. Jim, we're at the tail end of our career. We can't change and change our systems. Mm -hmm. Totally understand. You got three mm -hmm. more, five more years. Why disrupt? You don't want to do it. But I do tell them and they do get this. You may be done, but your connections and relationships aren't. Yeah. Because you could build rev share mm -hmm. for your children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wouldn't you like to pass it? And then they think, you go, wait, 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 wait. You're right. I'm done. Yeah. And I don't yeah. care mm -hmm. because they were all agents and there's these companies, a big company, but they have a lot of relationships. They never thought of a way to pass this. And that's how yeah. a lot of our well, friends. Well, it never existed before. Never existed. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. And now they see, wait. I can build it for junior. I can yeah. build it for my daughter. And by the time they're 18, get their license. If something happens, I pass it and transfer. Well, that was a big part mm -hmm. of why. I mean, I've got a four and a five, five and a half year old. And a big part of why I came to EXP is I'm going to spend the next 20 years building my empire as best I can. Mm -hmm. And I would like an equity pay piece that I could give to my children. And I can will my rev share to them yes. so long as they hold a license. And believe you me, one of them will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, very interesting to hear um, because I think as people move into retirement, there there isn't, you know, they, they want to step away from that production element. But is a great way to stay involved as well. A great yes. way to feel like you're still doing something progressive. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, and it is leaving a legacy. So many mm -hmm. people, we always say, under their, their career path in their 20s and 30s, or even some interning in college, and I'm actually working now with universities to start this earlier, especially yeah. in multicultural, diverse groups. Really cool. Very important to start high school, college, you know, community college, right? As, as sometimes universities come very expensive. How else can we get people plugged in? Because there's ways to make great amount of money with hustle, mm -hmm. just learning and, and doing. So it is important to start early with everyone to create this opportunity so people can plug in through technology. You can be everywhere. You don't even have to be in all the big cities, right? Yeah, yeah, there yeah. are things to do. And as you grow to the olders, and, and when you said those that want don't want to join, it's really the technology that they just don't want to deal with, right? right? You've heard it with the That's old right. school. Yeah. Jim, I'm still flipping <laughs> yeah. in my, my little flip thing, you know, back in the 60s, yeah. 70s. Yeah. Ugh, I just, just got a fax. Uh, how do I email you the fax? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're still trying to figure out fax, let alone the internet. What's this thing? You know, this little black box that does everything. But the other fun thing is, remember, the, eight, the okay. generations are getting older in commercial mm -hmm. real estate. Mm -hmm. The way, and they, they've already shown, trying to make all millennials and younger come back to work doesn't work. Yeah. You need to work 
the way they want to work. In a dynamic environment. Mm -hmm. Remote working, virtual working is the way they want to work. They don't mind learning. They can learn everything from YouTube now, yep. everything off the internet. Yep. They don't mind hustle. They don't mind calling. They don't mind doing TikTok or all these <laughs> other ways yeah. to attract. And we know, you know, I always have to you know, say that it works and there are different ways to do it. But the future of what we're doing, and I'll tell you, 50 is the cutoff line. 50 and above, they're like, eh, more skeptical. When you go to 40, 30, 20, we're in. Oh, yeah. Because they see it. They go, metaverse, working virtual. I can do it anywhere. I just learn. I use social media. I use contact creation. They love it. And this uh, is the new way of working. Funny you say that. We've got um, a team member on on our team. Um, He's 24. Right, and I remember he was also our our first hire. He was an, our assistant at the time, and again, really in tune with social media, TikTok, all these things that we we knew about, but maybe we weren't super immersed in. Right, and we told him about EXP, and we said, "Hey, listen, this is a tech platform. What do you think from your perspective?" Mm-hmm. And it was like a four second conversation where he was like, "Listen, everything is already online. This is the future. This is the way of the future." Mm-hmm. So. You know, it's like you said, as you move down the generation, it, it certainly becomes more and more attractive. And that's where the longevity is, too. Yes. Right. And you have to work as people try. Go back to office. No, we quit. Yeah. And we'll find something <laughs> yeah. else. And remote working. So trying to force them around, uh, you know, uh, a square peg in a round hole is not going to work. Yeah. Working the way they want to work, the young, next generation, educating them earlier on in the real estate career moving them to the metaverse and how we're going to evolve because we know it's going to constantly evolve one mm-hmm. day to a point where we won't even know like this we're going to be virtually in all parts of the yeah, world yeah. and we'll be talking but it's going to feel like this like we're in the same room that's how we met which yes is, which is which blew yeah. my mind yeah. three three weeks ago four weeks ago we had a zoom chat we were doing the, uh, an attraction based sort of uh, knowledge if you will of what's coming with exp commercial and if, if you had told me, ah, you know, Jim's going to be in our studio in three weeks, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> I would have been like, what's the president of, of EXP Commercial going to be doing with us? And here you are. And here we are. Yes. As a group, as a family, trying to push this model forward so people can gain financial freedom. Exactly. So I'm sure there's a few listeners on here right now that are curious and want to know more. What is the best way for agents to reach out to learn more about EXP Commercial? Well, on the podcast, you know, Dan and and Narayan, they should call you, (laughs) which you can get me. But I will say on LinkedIn, if you just follow us on LinkedIn with EXP Commercial, we also are on EXP Commercial on YouTube. We are on TikTok now too (laughs) and and finding many ways. But I think if you can just go to www.expcommercial.com, you'll find a lot of good information uh, there. But I would just say, you know, watch, like, follow, learn. And we will collaborate, you know, and we all know they're all coming one day. However, we're going to be working together. So that's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And it just takes time as we all know, three, four, five years sometime. Okay. I'm ready to come over or building a legacy for your children or grandchildren. And many people, when you fill their needs, right, of what they want, you will get what you want a lot of times. So I love what Glenn says about that. So let's give you audience and everyone else what you want. So then we get what we want. And what we want too is working with people we really enjoy, collaborating with friends. There is no better way of doing business. And I love that. Uh, And I want to end it with one thing. And it was from the EXP Con. And it was that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes. And Jim, thank you for being here because it's shown us how much you care. And I think that that is a great place, unless you want to add anything, Dan, where we should I love it. Let's, yeah. love, let's end on love. That was awesome. Jim, awesome. thank you so much. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next time. Perfect. Perfect.